A powerful nor'easter is hitting the East Coast. Devastating winds, rain and flooding could impact tens of millions of people. These are some images from New York, New Jersey and Massachusetts showing heavy downpours. The governors of New Jersey and New York have declared states of emergency. The massive storm is expected to cause even more damage, including power outages as the winds pick up speed. Mola Lenghi reports. Well, a steady rain and wind has been pounding the Northeast all day. In fact, there's been more rainfall in the last 24 hours in the New York, New Jersey, Connecticut tri-state area than those states typically receive on average in an entire month. Tens of millions of Americans feeling the impact of severe weather tonight. In the Northeast, the season's first nor'easter brought heavy rain and damaging winds, knocking down trees, flooding roads in New Jersey, and leaving drivers stranded in New York City. By the time you realize it was in water. Today, the Coast Guard confirms 45-year-old Lawrence Broderick was found dead after kayaking off the coast of Long Island. Police in one New Jersey town made more than a dozen water rescues from cars and flooded roads after the storm dropped nearly five inches of rain in some areas. Ahead of the storm, many feared a repeat of the deadly and devastating weather brought by the remnants of Hurricane Ida last month. I'm a little worried because I got flooded in a couple of my properties, and if we lose it again, I'm going bankrupt. This storm had already cut a path of destruction through the Midwest this weekend, with tornadoes decimating several towns in Illinois and Missouri. The roofs and walls are, are down, and, and I mean, yeah, it's just a total mass of destruction. Also this week on the West Coast, a power storm dumped record-breaking rain, triggering mudslides and major flooding in California after 13 inches of rain fell in parts of the state. The storm, a small consolation for the parched western states. Tonight, the waterfalls at Yosemite roaring again after California's driest year in nearly a century. Well, in addition to the rainfall, the concern here in New England overnight and into tomorrow is the wind, with wind gusts expected to reach up to 70 miles per hour, Elaine. More CBS News meteorologist and climate specialist Jeff Berdelli joins me now. Hi there, Jeff. It is good to see you in person. What is the latest on this nor'easter? Yeah, it's getting stronger and stronger. It's bombing out right now. That's why it's called a bomb cyclone. We see bombogenesis taking place to the east of New England. You can actually see kind of that half circle right there. That's the developing storm off of New England, and that's why we think we could see some hurricane force wind gusts right along Cape Cod and maybe as far west as around Montauk, but especially the islands, Block Island, and more so even now. Nantucket and into uh, this whole part of southeast New England, really. So you can see where the heavy rain is. It was across New York City. It's kind of rotating back in once again. And some places have already seen three, four inches of rain. We're going to see another couple of inches of rain on top of that. It's going to cause some flash flooding concerns. Nothing like Ida. Don't worry about that. But there will be ponding of water on the roads. It's going to be disruptive. And there'll be some water, you know, uh, let's say up to about a foot. But we're not talking about what we had during, during the remnants of Hurricane Ida, which is good news. But you can clearly see that storm's getting stronger stronger and stronger out to the east of New England. This is how much rain we've seen. Some places getting close to five inches of rain in uh, northern northeast New Jersey. Other parts of the Hudson Valley around three inches. The Finger Lakes right now we have some flood warnings ongoing. Eastern Long Island close to around four and a half, five inches of rain. And Elaine, we're going to add more rain as we head through the night and it will finally start to kind of taper off tomorrow. Well, you touched on this a moment ago, but what are some of the worst impacts that we're going to see from this? So it is heavy rains. Not again. We're not talking about the three inch an hour rainfall rates that we had with Ida. We're talking closer to an inch per hour rainfall rates and generally the ground can hold that rain and the rain seeps into the ground, but still we're going to see some flooding. So watch as this storm winds up to the southeast of New England and look at these gusts. Cape Cod 76 miles an hour. Now this leaves on the trees. There are going to be some trees down, some power lines down and likely some power outages. Watch Montauk gusting to around 65 miles an hour. That could happen later tonight and early tomorrow morning, but also notice the rain begins to taper off tomorrow morning around New York City and then tomorrow afternoon around uh, Cape Cod. So things will be begin to get a little bit better as we head on through the day tomorrow. In total, we see the yellow, that's two inches. We see the orange, that's up to four inches. And we see the red, that's up to six inches of rain. That's a month's worth plus of rain in really just about 24 hours or so. It's a lot of rain. Well, Jeff, what is making this bomb cyclone so strong? 
Well, there's a few factors out there. First of all, one of the things that kind of aids and abets these storms and makes them stronger, it makes them increase their intensity even faster, is very warm water. You know, the water off New England is 5 to 10 degrees above normal. That's not just right now. We've been seeing these temperatures grow and grow and grow over the past couple of decades because of climate change. In fact, the Gulf of Maine is warming faster than 99% of the oceans. This is one of the hot spots, and we're tending to see these storms grow in intensity faster and get even stronger. In addition, in the atmosphere, we have a big traffic jam going on right now. So it's not just the bomb cyclone off of the eastern seaboard. It's also what happened in the Pacific. We have a blocking pattern. Everything is getting stuck, and so these storms are kind of diving south. They're being forced south by this big block across Hudson Bay, Canada, and they're carving out their own territory, if you will. And when that happens, you get these really deep troughs and these strong circulations, and the result is these really strong storms. So the next one that's moving out of Colorado right now is going to produce another round of severe weather. This is going to happen overnight tonight and during the day tomorrow along the Gulf Coast. Could be some really strong winds past 70 miles an hour, maybe the possibility of tornadoes. So this extreme weather pattern continues, Elaine. Remember, last week we had the strongest storm ever in the Northeast Pacific. That was the equivalent of a Cat 3, Cat 4 hurricane. This one off the Northeast Coast is the equivalent of a Cat 2 hurricane, all happening within 48 to 72 hours. Wow, a lot to keep an eye on. Jeff Fragelli, mm -hmm. Jeff, thank you. You're welcome.